Good day, Jonathan. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. Thank you, sir, and appreciate uh, the opportunity uh, to share experiences and just, just good seeing you. Haven't seen you in a while and uh, always a pleasure. Well, thank you so much. For our audience, would you please introduce yourself and also let's tell us a little bit, where did you grow up? So I grew up uh, born in Philadelphia, uh, grew up uh, in North Philly. So I promised that I would give uh, North Philly a nice little shout out. Uh, it's been very instrumental uh, in my growth uh, and just background experiences. Uh, right next to Temple uh, University, so I had uh, access to a lot of things, good schools, uh, you know, and things of that nature. So it was it was just a uh, uh, phenomenal upbringing, is what I can say in the city of Philly. Well, thank you. For that. Shout out for Philly. So, where did you go to college, and what did you study? So I went to college at uh, North Carolina A and T University down in Greensboro. Uh, it's a almost to a degree a family college. Uh, so my aunt who lives up in Cherry Hill introduced me uh, and uh, they drove me down. And uh, four years later, uh, you know, Aggie pride is, is, is in me, uh, studied mechanical engineering. Uh, so got my engineering degree and uh, the rest is, the rest is history. Just a great experience in the city of Greensboro. So uh, let's, uh, where do you live right now and, and what do you do? So currently I live in uh, Suffolk, Virginia. Uh, and most people don't really know Suffolk. When you talk about the Tidewater area, it's usually either Norfolk or Virginia Beach, but uh, Suffolk's a great location. Uh, uh, so currently what I do, I own my own uh, consulting firm uh, and currently work uh, with Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Coast Guard uh, in a very... Uh, kind of storied history on how uh, I got there, but the, the my my current assignments are in the U.S. Coast Guard and just a uh, phenomenal military organization. Thank you. Well, let's back up a little bit uh, and try to cover the time between you graduated from college. I'd like to know your career history and along that uh, path, if you could share with us some of perhaps the more interesting projects that you've had in your career. So where'd right. you go right after college? So right after college, I uh, went back to Philly maybe for about uh, maybe 20 days. Uh, got the phone call, had several interviews in different locations, but got the phone call uh, from Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Uh, and uh, it was a great, and, and I knew I really wanted to be further south. Uh, so the timing was perfect. Uh, so the Tidewater area called, I, uh, we drove down, uh, settled in and uh, started working in nuclear production uh, at NSY. And, and, and I'll tell you, nothing really compares uh, to nuclear training. Uh, the, the amount of rigor uh, that goes into it, the aptitude to be able to work on uh, the type of assets uh, that, these, that that organization worked on and the teachings that it gave me uh, really set the path of, of process and discipline and discipline to process. Uh, so that's been kind of like my mantra growing up. Uh, but as that matured, uh, maybe about 14, 15, 16 years in, uh, I then transferred, transitioned that is to uh, CACI. I had a great experience there. Uh, and currently they're under the leadership of uh, uh, Mark Hugel, I believe, uh, but just a great organization. Uh, then I made my transition back. So the, so the khaki transition really to a degree, I started that transition at a certain point from hardcore engineering more into performance type improvements and more of your, I would say, softer skills uh, and influencing outcomes, advice writing technical procedures that may drive the outcome. Uh, and from khaki, made it back to DOD, this time on a on Department of the Navy side, but the Human Performance Center. Uh, great organization, uh, hundreds of psychologists, uh, operational analysts, uh, engineering folks, 
you know, just a great mind. And that was a human performance center. It was a human performance organization with HPT qualified people and people who really took performance technology in the Department of the Navy uh, to the next level. Uh, and then from there, opportunity rose. Uh, I could have stayed on uh, on the government civilian side track, but I decided at that point in 2008, had an opportunity to then make my way over to the US Coast Guard, which you know I've always looked at them and, and, and really wanted to work with those guys. And that opportunity came in 2008. So, so really when you then transition to what were some of the more interesting projects, uh, I'll start there. That that transition to the U.S. Coast Guard, then at that point, they were doing uh, a massive modernization of the total organization. Uh, and they looked at uh, everything from operations uh, to mission support, uh, uh, you know, to field ops, uh, you, you name it, uh, we touched it. Uh, and it was just a great uh, opportunity uh, to really facilitate through engineering concepts on the operations side and even on the mission support side, but then learning how to bring in human performance concepts when you're dealing with, with people and then driving execution. Uh, so from the engineering piece to then facilitation, then to influence, to in driving outcomes, that really started beginning to transition. So that modernization lasted, actually it's kind of ironic, it's still to a degree, going on somewhat now uh, as people get mature and then you backtrack and then go fix certain things uh, that you could not address at that point. Uh, the next one was during the period of working uh, between NNSY uh, and CACI, I did a DOD tour uh, through the Executive Leadership Development Program, just an awesome uh, program of mid to senior level Promoted, promotable type people. Uh, you were, the objective really was to get a cadre of folks ready for senior level positions. So, I mean, for one year we traveled and I mean, we hit everything, every, every defense department base, uh, every training facility. Uh, you know, we had opportunities to ride in tanks, had opportunities to fly uh, in helos, uh, Chinooks, you name it, we, we did it all. Uh, but the pinnacle of that training was actually several trips overseas uh, and the ultimate trip was to uh, South Korea and actually a visit down to the DMZ. So, so those type of experience help shape the decisions that you make will impact you know, how the military, and I really got to see how they actually protect the nation. Uh, and I would say probably the next, I have so many intriguing ones, but really the most interesting ones was actually Ironic was the one working uh, with you, backing up with you and our, our great friend, the late Mark Graham Brown, on the first and second line level supervisor program, uh, leadership development program at Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Uh, at that point, I was an engineer transitioning through that performance side into a group with Tommy Tidwell. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll talk about that at, at some point. Uh, but, but, but you had a very good approach and how to get that master performer or top type of performance codified uh, and then baseline where people are and then build those necessary steps uh, that will allow people that can zoom through quickly or people that needed more of a you know succinct pattern for execution. So it, it really depended upon the individual and their desire. Uh, to want to move. It was a very flexible program and, and very appreciative. So many more I can discuss, but I would say those are probably the ones that had significant highlights in, in helping me transition. Yes, thank you for that. Well, that was way back in 2003. Yes. Uh, I believe it was Mark Graham Brown who worked with us on that project. He's the one who had brought me in and Mark and I go back to back to 1979 and we worked right. together in a consulting firm and uh, he'll be sorely missed. We just uh, we just lost him a, a couple yeah. of months ago. Yeah. Uh, so you told us a little bit about your first exposure to what I call HPT, human performance technology. Others call it human performance improvement 
or right. performance improvement or evidence-based practices for, for performance improvement. But um, so when did you first really get into that and, you know, uh, under the covers, so to speak, under the hood and take a good hard look at that? As an engineer, I'm interested in, you know, what your take on that was, because I think it's pretty much uh, uh, an engineering discipline uh, focused on uh, not just the human element, but all of it, but, uh, you know, all performance is a human endeavor. And so, but how do you refer to this? And so wh when do you dig deeper into all of that? So, so the interesting piece where I dig deep, uh, the human, human Performance Center actually allowed me to really dig deep uh, because at that point you also had human systems integration. Okay. So when you really kind of couple the two of performance and system, uh, it, it really was potentially a great marriage of, of people that can take the human element side, okay, uh, and all the cognitive ability, and then the complexity of all the machinery and engineering pieces, and then you put those together. So I would say the Human Performance Center really allowed me to really, really, really dig, uh, dig deep uh, and really get involved in that understanding. And you're absolutely right. The, 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 the engineer in me and then the adoption of a lot of the performance technology uh, principles uh, marry well together. Uh, and it, it just it just actually helped me become a better bottom line, a better executioner. So what I'm interested in in, in getting from you right now is some of the major influences, if you can point to you know, people, articles, books, uh, so that our audience ha, you know, might wanna follow up on those things. So what, what were some of your most early influences in, in this world of uh, human performance improvement, human performance technology? So, so I would have to give a uh, huge shout out to my guy, Tommy Tidwell uh, from Norfolk Naval Shipyard, uh, actually bought me in. Uh, and brought several of us over. Uh, and, and initially it was just kind of part-time-ish. Uh, so I was still in nuclear production and in engineering, but the opportunity then to come over and help him in Norfolk Naval Shipyard relative to strategy, uh, relative to metrics, and then relative to actual human performance. So that combination and also the interesting piece I'll throw in there, we did a lot of implementation of uh, Seven Habits, Franklin Covey. Uh, and although Franklin Covey deals, you know, dealt a lot on the, the soft skill side, uh, there's still a lot of logic that goes into how to perform uh, when you have a performing team. Uh, and then all the performance technology, the books, uh, Rumler, uh, Jim Collins, uh, you know, good to great, uh, books like break all the rules. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'll tell you in, in, in those, those type of books are still very relevant today. Okay. Uh, all types of lean six Sigma books and, and, and you name it. So there were a, you know, series of books and articles, uh, and things that helped me. Uh, I spent a significant amount of time, too, with Mark uh, studying Baldridge, uh, and Mark uh, was a Baldridge examiner, and we were tracking uh, in that direction, too. Uh, so the ability to piece engineering, strategy, metrics, human performance, and I would say some lukewarm understanding of human systems integration is really just kind of envelopes everything. So I, I would tell anybody, read, okay? So no matter what your discipline is, you know, it, it's okay to pick up, you know, a book from Rumler. I even have your, your latest book, which, which, is, which is great. And there, there are just tools out there that will allow people uh, to increase their ability to be able to help clients. Well, let's, let's, let me shift gears here a little bit. I'm going to ask you for your 30 second elevator speech on what you currently do. And I usually set this up by saying you're at a neighborhood party and there's a new neighbor and, you know, you're, they're just meeting you and they ask you, Jonathan, what do you do? What do you tell them? 
Right. So I would probably in 30 seconds say, hey, you, you know, you know, as an engineer, I'm a small business owner. Uh, and currently uh, it is a management consulting firm uh, with engineering principles, uh, performance improvement. Uh, we're even delving into cyber uh, and uh, uh, metrics, uh, balance scorecard, uh, Lean Six Sigma. So when you kind of look at that group, uh, it really is a, like I said earlier, a, a combination of engineering strategy, all those things. So, so, so what I was able to do with the company is build a set of tools, okay, that when we are working specifically on a defined problem or a defined item that a client desires, we have a multitude of different venues to choose from, okay? Uh, so no, no one solution is a one size fit all for a problem. It's really specific to that client. Uh, so we're able to bring those multitude of various aspects uh, as long as we can really get from the client, what are you really trying to fix or where you're headed? So that's kind of like my 30 second speech. Well, thank you. So as a lifelong learner, what's, what's your current focus or most recent focus of learning? What, you know, what are you delving into? So interesting when, that's a great question. So I thought about things like grad school, it's like, eh, you know, I kind of really enjoy learning and reading different books. So I read a lot of articles. Uh, uh, I, I would say the next wave really is how to take the company uh, where it is right now uh, and the pedigree that we've built through, through the years of and then taking that focus to how do we grow smartly, okay? And what do I need to pick up additionally to help me and the company to grow smartly? Whether that's uh, different financial tools uh, in learning. Uh, so I'm constantly reading uh, things about CFOs uh, and what they do uh, so I can have a good understanding, uh, a good understanding of truly being a production oriented individual of multiple facets of clients across different DOD uh, spectrums. And, and what does that look like? So, you know, currently running a company, I, I do delve into a lot of the financials. Never really had to before, but the clarity there for that aspect is now. So I figured I, I kind of have the execution piece. Uh, now I'm nailing down understanding the financials. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where my focus is now. Thank you. My next question, is there a favorite performance improvement term or phrase that you would like to define for us? Perhaps you feel it's being misused or misconstrued or it's just a favorite term and you want to put your spin on it. What would that be? So, I would say really to a degree, not really. And here's why I say that. Here's what Mark Graham Brown taught me. Uh, Mark said, no matter what you choose, whether it's, for example, goals or priorities, okay? However you want to define your strategy or however you want to label uh, you know, the terms of the problem that you're solving and what principles you may use to do it, just be consistent, okay? Because most, most of those things are interchangeable. So, but you also have to know your client. So you may walk in certain environments and if you come with a performance technology approach that no one really can relate to, i.e. you really can't water it down to understanding, then it's likely the wrong approach. Uh, so there's so many different terminologies and different things that people use that are very interchangeable. So normally what I do, Guy, is, is you know, once I kind of understand the problem, then I'll hone it on the approach, get the buy-in from leadership, we then define it, and then we're consistent in what we do. And, and I find out that that's the better approach. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our language is, uh, is always a challenge and it's just best yeah. to talk in the language of the client rather than our own uh, jargon. 
Let's explore some more about some of the people who influenced you. You mentioned Tommy Tidwell from the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, who I had met at, at, on our project because he's the one who uh, sponsored that effort. But uh, so who else would you point to, uh, perhaps going back to college or at any point along your career, a shout out, if you will, uh, of people, so they are either not known to our audience or they might be known to our audience. They may have books or, or articles out there that people might wanna pursue to learn a little bit more from them. But uh, who, who would you point to as uh, helping you on your development? Sure. Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so I would have to really kind of walk it back quickly. Uh, so I always knew I wanted to be an engineer. All right. So first it was, you know, aerospace, you know, I just had this fetish with space. Okay. And stars and astronomy and, and all types of stuff. But my uncle, uh, you know, was very key. He's up in Jersey. My his name is Uncle Henry. Uh, everybody has an Uncle Henry. <laughs> uh, just I just watched him, and he worked for the Army. Uh, very solid individual. Uh, and so I'm like, wow, okay, engineering. Uh, so when I went to high school, instead of traditional, you know, back then, unlike schools now, I mean, we had shop classes. I mean, you can bring cars in and work on cars and you know, do crafts and different types of things. Well, we had engineering drafting as a discipline. And there were only, I think, three or four people who signed up for that class. So my project for that entire year was drawing a huge, uh, I think it might've been some type of electrical circuit complex. Uh, so that was my senior drafting project. And so I literally, literally honed in on engineering. Uh, that was my influence. I was always good at math uh, and loved the sciences. Uh, so that he was tremendous. Uh, and, and the funny thing about, to your prior question about performance and terms and things, performance comes in in, in, in many facets, although performance technology is a, you know, is, is a discipline in itself. Uh, the, the ability to be able to perform uh, is shaped by many folks. So he was, he was key. Uh, as I got older, uh, a couple of fest professors at my university uh, were key. Uh, a lot of my, several of my family members uh, were key. But then as I transitioned on the professional side, literally there were a series of, I would say, civilians and, and military officers, be it junior, mid, or senior. Uh, and and some on the military side, I've watched, like, for example, coming into the Coast Guard, you know, knew those guys when they were lieutenants, and now some of them are being promoted, uh, you know, to flag, I mean, to, uh, to 06 uh, captain level. So you, you get to watch, you know, that progression uh, of those folks uh, and the things that they do from an operational or missing support piece. Uh, but, you know, even some specific names, uh, you know, he's now uh, deceased, but uh, Rear Admiral Tom Jones, uh, Rear Admiral uh, Rick Gromlich, uh, those guys were extremely instrumental, uh, civilian people uh, like uh, Mrs. Sabellico and other guys that I work for, and even a current client that I work for now, Mr. Harold Price. Uh, th th these guys help shape a lot of things going in. And even at Human Performance Center, you know, there were individuals there uh, that, you know, had, you know, just remarkable influence, even going back to NNSY. Just so there are a lot of informal mentors guy, people that they didn't know I was watching them, but I was, okay. And you, you pick what works for you uh, and then you start building your brand as you go. Uh, and that's kind of really, you know, it was just a lot of folks along the way, some informal, some very formal, uh, that helped shape me to where I am now. Jonathan, thanks so much for agreeing to participate in this uh, video interview with me today. My final question to you is that, do you have any parting words of wisdom or guidance for our audience, especially those new to the field, just coming into the business, related to all things performance improvement? What would your guidance be? I would say to 
the, the first thing coming into the field or any field, okay, uh, that I've learned, uh, be humble, uh, stay humble in the successes, uh, because trust me, there will be failures, okay? Uh, and people remember. <laughs> so, uh, so once you're humble uh, and they see that characteristic in you, uh, the failures really just become a part of your growth. Uh, so I would ultimately say coming into the field, uh, you, you, you can't do, I would highly recommend don't on a professional side, don't ever do that alone, okay? Uh, it's a very difficult path to think because, you know, you might have gotten straight A's or, you know, you might be the brightest kid in the class. Uh, there are a lot of roadblocks and stumbling blocks out there, and there are people who can literally help. Uh, so you really want to grab those formal mentors, uh, reach out either at a university, reach out to current professors, reach out to alumni, uh, build your network. Okay, but within that network, uh, two things that will always get you by as high integrity uh, and high and high character. Okay, you maintain those with humility, people will throw things your way, people will always be willing to help. Uh, and then you'll progress and, and as long as you don't measure success, you know, by your wallet or things, uh, you'll always be fine. Excellent. Thank you for that advice. Again, Jonathan, thanks so much for doing this with me today. Have a great day. Thank you, sir, and appreciate you and all you do and uh, keep charging. Thank you, bye-bye.